Now we're moving on to principles of economic equivalence. So one of the, the first principles is that uh, common time basis is required when conducting economic equivalence calculations. So when you do any economic equivalence calculation, when you're trying to compare cash flows, you need a common time basis. So you can't really compare period two with period three. You can't compare um, because that's not fair, right? You wanna make sure that whatever it is, is comparable at the same time. So if your future worth at this period is equal to $100, for example, and your future worth at this same period is equal to $150, you would choose this one. Likewise, not all your cash flows will be the same. Your cash flow over here might be maybe $200, in which case you would choose this cash flow. And it may, and in this particular cash flow may be chosen at period two, but if your period is four, for example, then you have to do the analysis again. Is what is the value at the fourth period? And then you'd pick the highest value then because you always want the most money, right? So you would have to compare the periods. It's not fair for you to compare the third period of this cash flow versus the first period of this cash flow and the fifth period of the third cash flow. So that's pretty much what. Um, the first principle is about and we'll do examples to understand this much clearly. Now that we have a sense of what economic equivalence is, let's just drill the concept by doing a simple example. Suppose you have $2,000 and you want to deposit it at the bank at 12% interest compounded annually. Compounded annually. So what is the economic equivalence of your deposit five years from now? So it's a 12% interest per year because it says compounded annually and your initial amount or your principal value is $2,000 or your present value. So let's start by drawing out our cash flow diagram. You want to deposit $2,000 at year zero and you want to know at 12 percent compounded annually what is the equivalence of your deposit so you just deposit two thousand dollars now and you want to know how much it's worth five years from now you want to take it out five years from now so how much is it so one two, three, four, and five, five years, right? Well, we can just use our compounded interest formula, which is future value. We're trying to find out the future value at five, right? We don't need to write the year five. Is equal to present value times one plus i to the power of number of periods. The number of periods is equal to five. So n is equal to five i is equal to 12 percent and p is equal to two thousand dollars so f is equal to two thousand times one plus zero point one two convert the percentage to decimal to the power of five which equals to this value over here three thousand five hundred and twenty four dollars and sixty eight cents let's just do another example of time basis common time basis suppose you are promised five thousand dollars five years from now at ten percent interest compounded annually what amount would you currently require for it to be equivalent to five thousand dollars in five years so what amount so what present value do you need now for that present value to be equivalent to $5,000 five years from now. 
so you're offered one cash flow which is you have your you get five thousand dollars and right this is zero one two three four five so your five these are your periods this is one cash flow and what I'm asking is how much do you need now for the value to be equivalent to five thousand dollars so what is this value so that it becomes five thousand dollars so what is your present value well we have our equation which is f is equal to p times one plus i to the power of n right and we are trying to find out p we have f and we have i which is 10 percent and n is equal to 5 so p is equal to f over 1 plus i to the power of n and p is then equal to 5000 which is our future value divided by 1 plus 0 0.10 10 percent to the power of 5 p is equal to 3104.61 so if you have three thousand one hundred four dollars and sixty one cents right now this is the exact same thing as having five thousand dollars five years from now now the next question is what is the amount or the future worth at period number three when n equals to three what is the present value or what does this value turn into three years from now and what does this five thousand dollars future value future worth turn into in the third period and we are going to check whether it's equivalent because we want to know if this concept of economic equivalence works because it's the same cash flow right so they should be equal to each other so we will start with the future value formula which is f is equal to p times 1 plus i to the power of n where p is 3104.61 1 plus 0 0.10 to the power of 3 because we're trying to figure out what the future worth is for the third period which is equal to Four one three two point two four. Now we're going to check if this value at the third period, so the third period it equals to four one three two point two four. If this is equivalent to P is equal to five thousand. So now we're trying out the present worth formula is equal to f over 1 plus i to the power of n. So 1.10 to the power of 3 or to the power of 2. Right? So this is the fifth period. We're two periods away from this $5,000. So it's equal to and it should be equivalent to this value. And it is you may get your answers may differ by maybe a decimal place or two because your calculator is not calculating the exact value you may have rounded this um, this present worth to 61 cents right so because of that you may have a slight difference but the the dollar amount should be equal to each other which is uh, which is correct so this means that so this means that you can have a present value which can give you an amount in the third period 
and it will be equivalent to you having a future value and that giving you an amount in the third period or any period as long as you compare the same period as long as you have a common time basis you can compare the two cash flows and decide what is better in this case we compare the same cash flow so they're equivalent but if you had different cash flows then they may be different and you would choose the higher one